Heavenly Father, Lord, you are here in this place. Whether we are at home, whether we are outside, Lord, you are, your presence is here, Lord. And you want to enter our hearts once again, Lord. And you don't want us just to go through the motions, take notes today. You want to encounter us, Lord. And we want to not leave this place without recommitting our hearts to you, Lord. Because there's a world out there, Lord, that doesn't know Jesus Christ, Lord. And you have given us this mantle, Lord, of sharing and being a witness to the community, Lord. So one day, the whole world, all of Manila, the whole nation, all of the world will proclaim, Hosanna. And that is our vision when all nations, all people are saying, Hosanna in the highest. So let's declare that prayer as a faith vision that one day our family, our friends will join together to sing the words, Hosanna, and give glory to Jesus Christ. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. We praise you, Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. One more time, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Give us that vision, Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. the Lord a clap offering. Praise the Lord. Do you believe one day all the nations will give glory to God? Amen? Yeah. One day you will see your friends, your family, your relatives all singing this song together. Amen. And that will be the true victory. Even a greater victory if UP wins today as well, right? The true victory is in Jesus Christ. Amen. So turn to your partner and turn to your neighbor and say, the true victory is in Jesus Christ. Please be seated. So today as I walked in, I saw there was a color scheme, some maroon, some blue. I was wondering what was going on. And I know after this conference is over, there is a big event. And I said, oh, did you plan the conference to end at 12? So there could be, what is this, this under motive desire? But no, but I was assured by the organizers that when we planned this, they were, um, UP was not even close at that point. So it is God's desire, okay? So again, but the true victory is in Jesus Christ, okay? Whoever wins or loses. So um, we're so excited today to be with you for the last um, two sessions of um, IDMC Clinic. And again, we've spent so much time together, so much, um, we have learned so much. Again, we've had um, Pastor Tony start us with the key to leadership residence, the foundation of leadership residence, and then the building residence from the inside up. And then yesterday we closed with building a smooth transition towards an IDMC. Today will be the last two sessions of building residents through training from a pre-believer all the way to uh, a multiplying disciple. And then Pastor Tony will close it. We'll talk about the seven leadership processes. So let's, without further ado, let's just begin today. A building residents through training. Um, I think one of the organizers asked, how do we take people from all the way from a non-Christian all the way to being a multiplying disciple? How do we train people um, to, be, to build that resonance in there? And there's three um, training principles I want to share with you at the very start of this um, session. And the first training principle is we don't try to be disciples. 
We don't try to be disciples. We don't try. We train to be disciples. Amen? We don't try to be disciples. We train to be disciples. There's a really key difference in trying and training. As Paul says, he trains his body to reach the prize. We don't try to be disciples. We train. So turn to your neighbor and say, we don't try, we train. Okay? So this is the heart of why we are intentional about our training um, in our church and also the churches you are from as first. So the first principle is we don't try to be disciples. We train to be disciples. And the second principle about training is truth and training does not change lives. Truth and training do not change lives. And you, you hear that statement, you wonder, then why are we here? At this seminar, why do we go to training? Why do we go to Bible studies if it doesn't change our lives? Because people focus on you attend this training, you do this, it will be great. And that is true. Attendance is one thing. But what really matters is truth alone does not change lives. It's truth and training training applied that change lives. Amen? Applied truth changes lives lives. And that is a principle we must remember. Wherever training program we are going to, it is only when we apply it in our daily life that we really reap the benefits. Training itself does not change lives. Only applied truth changes lives. So the first principle is we don't try to be disciples. We Train And second, truth and training does not change lives. Truth and training apply change lives. And the last principle is one of my favorites is, you know, discipleship and resonance is not taught. Again, if it's not taught, why do we go to trainings? Why do we attend seminars? Why do we attend conferences? Discipleship is not taught I I can't just say, come into the classroom and I teach you resonance. I teach you discipleship. There's a deeper thing. Discipleship is not taught. Discipleship is caught. Isn't that true? It is caught. It is something you catch. It's something that stirs your heart. You said, that is God's word for me. That is God's word for the church. It is something you catch. Like, I don't expect you to listen to, to under, remember a hundred of all, everything I taught today. It'll be, it's impossible for you to remember every single thing, every PowerPoint slide, even though my PowerPoint may have power and point. You probably will only remember one or two things because God, that is what God hits your heart and you catch it. And that is what you're looking for when you go to training. It's something that catches your heart, something that catches your destiny. So discipleship is not taught. Discipleship is caught. And these are the three principles that really overarch training, whether in our church or your church. These things really will help your training become, bring to the next level of being resonating as well. So these are three training principles, principles that are our framework as you think and design your own training uh, materials for your church and ministry. But beyond just principles, there are practical things to think about as well. So whether you are in a cell group leader or whether you're a member, these are some practical um, considerations for discipleship training. I'm going to go through this very quickly because it's more practical as well. So first, your training must be relevant. Your match training to felt needs. When you're designing training materials, you must think, what is people's felt needs? Again, if your audience is um, university, young adults, you must think, what do they need to grow in the Lord? Felt needs. Secondly, we believe in on-the-job training. So training must have a practical on-the-job training. It cannot be just only um, sitting in a classroom. There has to be some interaction, some relevance. Third, is employ the training resources that others can provide. Others can provide. Don't be afraid of learning from other churches, learning from other people, and and adapting their materials. In our church, we take materials from all sorts of places, and we're totally okay with that because the, the kingdom of God is bigger than our church. 
and we, when the different minds come together, we use different churches' materials, and it's okay. We might adapt it a bit, but we, uh, we, we take um, training resources that others can provide. Four, um, send out key leaders as learning teams for select training. So if we hear another church has a great training or a great, we, we, send, we, we send a team to go and see what they're doing and bring back a report. How is this training done as well? And our church always will send people to explore a different seminar, a different teaching, a different training. We come back and say, this is really good. This will really help our discipleship. This will really help build resonance in our members. And develop an all-level leadership development system. All levels mean from a, a non-Christian all the way to the full-time pastor. How are we developing everyone at every stage? How are we developing everyone at every stage? And when we're thinking about curriculum design, when we're thinking about how do we design a curriculum, there's four basic um, outcomes for curriculum. And the first one is there must be in the training, there must be a foundational course that teaches people about the doctrine and word. Remember yesterday we talked about the early church. All 3,000 new Christians, they anchored in the apostles' teaching and prayer and the word of God, right? So foundations is very important to any training. Second one is formation. The training must include spiritual disciplines. How do you read the word of God for yourself? How do you pray? You know, how do you tithe? How do you worship? All these are spiritual disciplines. The third one, we love having all the same letters, okay? So this foundation, formation, and function. Skills development. How do you share the gospel? How do you lead a small group? How do you follow up a new believer? How do you lead worship? All these are skills that we need to pass on during our training courses. So foundation, formation, and function are three of the curriculums that must be in any training program. And those in most churches, most ministries, they have all three of them. But the fourth one is something we tend to forget. It is the framework course. Framework course. It's, it's not... It's not doctrine, it's not disciplines, it's not skill, but it's teaching the people how to think, how to analyze, how to have effective thinking. So when someone gives you um, a problem or some, you need to lead or have some problem or some counseling or lead something, you have frameworks in mind. Such as yesterday when we talked about think big, start small, build deep. This is a framework that we try to teach our members at the framework level and how to use our time, what we can't do, what we can do, what we won't do, what we must do. These are frameworks that we want to pass down to our disciples so they have a way to think through the issues in life. It's the framework course. So these are the four types of curriculum that is necessary, we believe, to build resonance and to build disciple-making in the local church. And the last one is set specific training goals and outcomes. What is the end goal of this outcome? Why are we attending this training? And to tell people, why are we doing what we are doing? So people know the, the end goal. So that was very, very fast. But there are seven practical um, considerations for discipleship training. Now, for the majority of the time, I was asked by the organizers just to share in Covenant EFC, how do we train our people from non-Christian all the way to a full-time staff? Like, what is the journey someone goes when they walk into our church and what, how we develop them, how we build into their lives from the beginning and end? So I'm going to share with you, and the purpose of sharing with you is not for you to copy. <laughs> it's just to have you to think about your own training, your own journey as well. And just to make sure, are there any gaps in the, in the system, perhaps. So, again, in our church, we, we're always thinking, how can we develop growth strategies? How can we have, how can everyone in our church grow to the next level? Something for everyone. Whether you're young, a mature, new believer, um, mature believer, all those things. Something for everyone. So, we're going to start at the very beginning, 
Let's start at the very beginning. I think that's a, very, that's a song. Um, the first one, we start with pre-believers or non-Christians. And we believe that's where discipleship can begin. The seeds of discipleship can begin. In our church, we have, we have what we call um, bless. As we had shared yesterday, we teach our members that evangelism is not an event. It's a lifestyle. And we do that through a bless. And again, the bless is, just to review, bless is, you know, we pray, we, we, and we train our people to pray for their friends, listen to their friends, and then the, the main one is eat with the friend, <laughs> take them out to eat, get to know them, serve them with no strings attached, serve them because you love them, not serve them because you want them to become Christian. There is a difference. And then share your own testimony of how God has brought you into the kingdom of God. So that is bless. That's how we train our people. In the past, we did lots of big events, like Christmas events. And we used to do a lot of outreach events. We, we, we still do that. But at the end of the events, we realized we were super tired <laughs> and we used a lot of money. <laughs> and those things are good. But we realized the day-to-day -day evangelism is really, really effective and really what discipleship is all about. So we have bless. And beyond that, we have what we call the, um, an eight-week alpha course. An alpha course is basically a curriculum from the UK that, oh, it was here, uh, a curriculum from UK that, that, that answers the eight big questions about Christianity. And it's meant for pre-believers. It's meant for non-Christians to come, have dinner, and to watch a video introducing them to who is God? who is um, Jesus, and it allows them to ask questions. It's for skeptics. So we do that as well. So for pre-believers, we have these two courses for them. And then for bless, again, for me as a pastor, I try to practice this as well. And um, in April when I was here, just for the first IDMC conference, um, Clevy asked me if I will meet his father, um, Uncle, uh, Uncle Jimmy. And I said, sure. And I realized Uncle Jimmy was not a believer yet. And we just, just practiced bless. We just had dinner, a, a breakfast at Wildflower. That food is really, really good there. <laughs> and, then, um, and we just had breakfast and just got to know Uncle Jimmy. And we really had a good conversation. And he began to say, you know, I, you know sometimes I read the Bible and sometimes I don't. And I just, think, we just I say, encourage him to read the Bible and just seek God for yourself. Because he said, I'm not ready to become a believer. And he just so happened as well to, he came to Destiny Central, and I was preaching. So I said, why don't you just come and hear me preach? It's kind of odd. But I said, just come and just come. And he came um, to hear the word of God. And again, I was here coming again. And then I felt, well, let's, let's have dinner with Uncle Jimmy again. So yesterday after the seminar, last night, we, we just went over to the mall and we, we had a burrito and a burger and, um, at Army Navy. I thought that's a very strange name. Army Navy sells burritos. And then, um, so, um, so we went there and we just went there to talk. And it was amazing, you know, how Uncle Jimmy has, has changed. When he came to me, he just held my hand and says, thank you, Pastor Andy. And I was like, thank you for what? He says, I've been reading Psalms every day since April, and I'm at Psalm 100 and 104. So from April to November, he's been reading the Psalms, and he says it really touches his heart. He says every time he reads a Psalm, it just impacts what he's going on, what's going on in his life that day. And, and for me, that is the highlight of this trip. I'm sorry, I really enjoy you all as well, but <laughs> this, is really, this is really what it's about, right? You know, we can talk till the cows come home, but this is seeing God touch the heart of a person really is really what, really what matters. And it, it reminded me that all these conferences, all these things are great, but when you really see face-to-face -face God working in the heart of a, a person, it really shows you this is what discipleship is all about. Amen. So continue to pray for Uncle Jimmy that one day he will know the Lord and be singing with us, Hosanna in the highest. Amen? So pre-believer. So just as um, Esther, I mean, Esther became a, a believer, um, the next stage is new believer. And what do we do in new believers in our church? And I believe most, teachers, most um, churches have uh, some follow-up materials, and we use um, navigators. 
growing in Christ. We don't develop our own because Navigators is a really great uh, discipleship material. So it's basically a booklet that lasts for eight weeks, and it's a one-on-one. It's not a class. It's meant to be a one-on-one um, gain-to-know discipleship, just to get into the lives of the people you have to say. And we always encourage, if your friend becomes a believer, who should do the study? It should be you. <laughs> uh, in the past, we just outsourced it. You go to the new believer's class and see you later. <laughs> But now we believe, hey, you taking personal responsibility and to share your life with that pre-believer. So that is the goal in our church. So uh, a few years ago, one of my wife's colleagues um, came to know the Lord. His name is Thomas. And, you know, as a pastor, I was so busy. And I, I kind of wanted to outsource the discipleship to someone else. It's like, oh, I'm so busy. But then God really convicted me. It's like, why don't you want to journey with a new believer? So God convicted me. So um, Thomas and I did the, the Navigator's material, but just to train, I brought a church member along as well, and we did the eight weeks together. And again, it just re- reminded me really what it's all about, seeing a new believer just encounter the Bible for the first time. It is a glorious experience. And he will ask, like in Ephesians, what do you mean salvation is a gift from God? And just see the, the truths impacting him for the first time really, really is a blessing that God wants all of us um, to really experience. So this is how it looks like, the new believers. It's um, Growing in Christ, a 13-week course for new and growing Christians. There's two parts, lessons on assurance of salvation and lessons on Christian living. So it's a 13 weeks, sorry, not eight weeks. It's expanded now. And we do this for all our new believers. And we, want to, we train people to do that one-on-one. Okay, so we have pre-believers, then we have new believers going through this um, eight-week one-on-one Bible study. And what's next? Um, Actually, after that, we didn't have for many years anything next. We just put them in a small group. And we felt maybe that's not the best thing. We need like a, we need an intermarry, we need something in the middle to introduce them to community life. So we, uh, we, uh, we developed what we call a one-year um, training material called Spiritual Friends and Foundations. Doesn't that sound wonderful? Spiritual Friends and Foundations. It invites you, what does it mean to be in community? What does it, in my, what does it mean to be in a Christian community? And how can we grow together? Because, again, New Believer was one-on-one, right? Now introducing you to the community. Sometimes when we just threw people into a small group, everyone is mature Christian. They kind of felt a bit out of place. So we introduced them to a community over one year. This is on Sunday afternoons. And just very quickly, um, spiritual friends and foundations. You don't have to write this all down. I can always send it to you later. But spiritual friends and foundations is a one-year pilgrimage. It just orients people to the friendship and faith community. Like, why do we have small groups? And there's four modules, um, following Christ, basic discipleship, prayer, spiritual warfare, bless lifestyle, conversations, because they're new believers. They really have a great opportunity to really share their faith. And then spiritual formation and spiritual nurture. So all these things, and then uh, we introduce them to silence and solitude, how to listen to God for themselves. And then we talk about community blessing. How can you reach the community and with, through social outreach and outreach? Again, again, you don't have to write all this down. I can send it to all of you leaders later. So spiritual friends and foundations, one-year journey. Um, after becoming a new believer. Okay, so we have, so after that, um, young believer, then we're going to maturing disciple, maturing disciple. And this is when we put them into the small group. We either, through the one year spiritual friends and friendship, sometimes a cell group will be birthed out of that one year, but sometimes um, they will join an existing cell group, and that's totally fine. And in that cell group, they will, every week they will go to small group through the curriculum. But there's a point we want them to grow even, um, to bring their discipleship to the next level beyond the small group. And we introduce something called a two-year intentional discipleship training. And this is more intensive. That's why it's called intentional discipleship training. And at this point, we also introduce membership class and our breakthrough weekend. Okay, so to join intentional discipleship training, we ask the people to become a member of our church, to make a commitment to a spiritual family. And part of that is also joining uh, a breakthrough weekend. So let me talk about uh, intentional discipleship training first. 
And again, I can send um, this slide to you as well. So IDT stands for Intentional Discipleship Training. It does not stand for I Die Training <laughs> because it is more intensive. And it's our, it's our prayer that every member in our church in the lifetime will go through IDT at least once. So we all have a common understanding, a common foundation. And IDT is a two-year commitment. I believe they sign up for two years, and they have to pay, if I remember, they have to pay 100 Singapore dollars to join, to join. I don't know how much 100 Singapore dollars is in Filipino, but I think it's like 4,000 4, pesos. So it's a two-year commitment. They really have to pay because we really believe when you pay for something, something your heart changes. <laughs> you don't take it for granted. Okay, so um, we, again, we start talking about the inner life. What is going on inside of you? How do what, inner life composure, what is beneath that iceberg? And it, at this point, it's gender-based small group community. Uh, our small groups are mixed, men and women. But during IDT, we split them into men's and women's. So the conversations can go a little deeper. And three semesters of inspirational modules. This meets on a Monday night. Okay, this meets on a Monday night. So the cell group, they will still have cell group on maybe Friday or Saturday, but this is in addition to going to their own cell group meeting. So it's an additional training just for two years um, to do that. So during the three semesters, the first semester is focused on the Word and Kingdom, getting into the Word teaching you Bible study tools. How do you get into the Word um, for, and to study it for yourself? Then next is Roots and Wings. And Roots and Wings is a curriculum developed by Pastor Edmund Chan. It's available for sale online or everywhere. And it's a curriculum based on how do we um, grow deep roots in the Lord. And Pastor Edmund Chan has chosen, and it's all years of discipleship mentoring, he's chosen his favorite um, passages to talk about discipleship. And again, um, how do we grow deep in the Lord, and how do we grow wings to reach out as well? So roots and wings. And the final semester is leading from the inside out. How do we lead? How do we mentor others? And it's, it's outward focus. And if you can see, this is very intentional. At the end of this two-year commitment, we want to raise the level of, of discipleship. And we hope after two years, many of these people will want to become perhaps a cell group leader, or to join ministry as well. So this is the, the end goal, is to continue to grow people. And here they also have a day with Jesus. During the one-year spiritual friendship and formation, it's silence and solitude, but here it's a whole day. So we ask people to take one day off work, one day off work for Jesus. <laughs> you know, sometimes we take one day off work to go doctor or to do something, but will you take one day off for Jesus? And they said, sure. And we bring them to a park, and we just guide them how you spend a whole day with Jesus. And for IDT, they say this day with Jesus is the highlight of two years. And we also read the entire Bible in two years as well. We give them a Bible at the beginning, and they read the entire Bible as well. So this is our um, IDT, not I die training, but intentional discipleship training. And we found... People just love, at first they're like, two years, you've got to be kidding me. Every Monday night, you've got to be kidding me. But when they go, and the more, the, really, the more you read the Word of God, the hungry you get, right? That's just the way it is. And the, through this two years, they really grow. And they don't want to miss any session. And there are very few dropouts. One lady was, even got pregnant in the middle of the two year and then she got pregnant. She gave birth. And I think a month later, she brought her baby to IDT. That's how hungry she was. And I said, wow. This, that's what can happen when God captures your heart as well. So IDT. And our church makes a big deal of it. Um, every year at graduation, we, the whole church comes together. We have an intentional discipleship graduation. And people invite their friends and family to just celebrate two years of your commitment and knowledge in the Lord. So every year we have like 100 or more people join. And we actually, we have to turn people away because we don't have space um, to train everyone. So that's intentional discipleship training. And, and it's really getting people in the Word. But on the other side of that, we, we really want to focus on the inner life and it really digging really what is beneath the surface. So during this time, we ask for people to attend the Breakthrough Weekend. The Breakthrough Weekend. I believe um, in Destiny, you have Encounter Weekend. And again, um, Encounter Weekend, Breakthrough Weekend came out of, 
um, encounter, weeding, uh, encounter weekends. Because Pastor Tony and Pastor Kei Kyung were sent to, is it Columbia? Columbia, I don't know, many years ago to just learn from the G12 conference. And they attended um, an encounter weekend with Pastor Lawrence Kong as well during that time, many, many years ago. And they really saw the beauty of it. And they saw how God really broke into people's life. And so we went to Covey. We always kind of adapted for our culture. So we, we expanded it from two days to three days. Because we felt two days is really fast. It's just like, wow, people leave and they're, like, they're so tired afterwards. Because we want to have, uh, we set aside a long, a long time and break the weekend for silence and solitude. So almost half a day is silence and solitude. So it's intentional. So break the weekend is, the focus is a right relationship with God, self, and others. And we really ask God to break in, break into our lives, to encounter us. Um, and when, when you break in, you break with and there's a breakthrough. And when Pastor Tony and Pastor Kei Kyung came back from the, the conference, the picture God gave them was, we're all like a pipe. We're all like a pipe. But sometimes the pipe has a choke in it. Like the, you turn on the sink and the sink just fills up. It's because something's stuck. And our spiritual life is something. We want to grow. We want to love God. But there's something preventing us. And sometimes we need to get away from the dailiness for God to speak into our life and to flush it all out. And we really found that God really transforms many people. So we, if you want to be a member of our church, you have to come to Breakthrough Weekend. It is compulsory. And that's how much we believe in, in it as well. And we encourage people to go to Breakthrough Weekend more than once. Like go every two years for a tune-up or something like that. That's a bad analogy. But, you know, to go in because Breakthrough Weekend, um, we have a men's Breakthrough Weekend. We split up, up by gender just to increase um, the sharing. And then we have um, Women's Breakthrough Weekend. And then we also have Marriage Breakthrough Weekend. And we always encourage, go to men first. Then go, and the women go to women's first. And then come together for marriage. Because it's all about seeking God for yourself first. So that's what we do as well um, for many years. And our own pastors um, anchor this Breakthrough Weekend. And the thing about Breakthrough Weekend is no two Breakthrough Weekends are the same. So six months before the pastors assigned to the Breakthrough Weekend, just pray with the committee, Lord, what is your burden for this Breakthrough Weekend? And out of that will come a verse. It could be, I thirst for you, or starting over, or loving God. Every Breakthrough Weekend has a different topic different materials. It is really led by the Spirit. That's why we ask people to come again um, in, after two years, because it's never, ever the same. And um, I've been to at least like 10 of them, and every one, God has found something else to take out of the pipes. And it's really, really um, something we really uh, encourage our members to do. And we also have our young adults break the weekend. For the men, adult and women, adult, it's all men and women. But for young adults, we allow the young adults to be together, <laughs> men and women to be together. So we have sessions for men only, women only. But we feel for young adults, they like to be together <laughs> to have it. And actually, sometimes some um, love also comes out of this as well, <laughs> okay? Which is a secondary purpose, not the primary. It's not a meat, it's not a meat market. It's a break the weekend, okay? So young adults, a breakthrough weekend. And then for young people, we also have a youth breakthrough weekend. It's not three days because we realize young people, they really want to spend time together. So we change this as well. So uh, in, our, in Singapore system, the whole month of December is school break. So right now, it's school break. So end of November is exams. The whole month of December is free. So usually families go on trips, and we said, let's use that for the Lord. So we encourage the young people to sign up for, I think, a four-week breakthrough weekend. Four-week. We call it 180. 180. And it's for, I think it's for grade six. Grade six. It's only for people in grade six. So on the cusp of adulthood, our cusp of teenagerhood, whatever you call it. And we ask them to dedicate four weeks for breakthrough weekend. And at first they're like, what? Give up my whole holiday? But we said, what are you doing in your holiday anyway? Sometimes you're at home watching TV, doing something. Give that to the Lord. And we ask every young people in their spiritual primers, every sixth grader, to join the Breakthrough Weekend. And what they do, they come to the church every day. They don't spend the night there. They come every day. 
and there's different activities. It's very hands-on. They go around the city to do outreach events. And over the weeks, you just see the Lord working in them. Because a lot of the young people in our church are maybe second-generation Christians. They, sometimes they feel their faith is a borrowed faith from their parents. And this 180 gives them an opportunity to really seek God for themselves. So over the three weeks, there's activities, and the, the whole youth ministry just stops and just focuses on these sixth graders. And at the end of the month, before they go back to school in January, we hold the three-day breakthrough weekend. And by that time, the relationships are formed, there's openness, all the shells are gone, and you really see God break in after that month. And although it takes a lot of money, a lot of resources, our next generation is worth it. Amen? And we want to put our money where our mouth is to the next generation as well. So that's our Youth Breakthrough Weekend. So, again, Youth Breakthrough Weekend is part of um, all the Breakthrough Weekends help our members to become more maturing disciples. So, again, maturing disciples, IDT, a membership class. Membership class just covers the history of our church, our vision, and our values. And then the Breakthrough Weekend. So what's after that? Is that the end of the story? No, we want to, again, grow people to seek and to serve, and we call it multiplying disciple makers. This We identify potential leaders, and here we have training for our cell group leaders, and then we also have training for the mentors of the cell group. I don't know how it's structured in your church, but in, in our church, every three or five cell groups has a mentor who mentors the cell group leaders. And for many years, um, we have cell group leader training. We, we changed it many, many times. And just this year, we launched our zone mentor training. Because for many, many years, we never trained our zone mentors how to mentor other people. We just assumed they knew how to do it. And this year, we launched our zone mentor training. So these are leaders. So multiplying disciple makers are, are the leaders, just like you are the leaders of our church. And how do we train them? Again, there, time does not permit me to share everything, but let me give you the framework of how we train our cell group leaders and our zone mentors. And we, in our church, we actually see them as, we, all, we, all, we see our mentors and leaders almost as a pastor. We don't call them a pastor, but they have a pastoral function. So we, we need to train them towards that. So for our cell group and zone mentor training, the first thing we, we share with them is our values and visions. Because the leader represents the church. And they're the ones that will spend the most time the least. So we have a whole um, Saturday focus on do you really understand the calling of covenant, to understand the vision and the values of covenant. Because, again, many people in our church, are, they look very skilled. They, they have great potential. But sometimes they don't catch the spirit of discipleship. So this is a whole day just to remind them what is our direction, what is our purpose. So one week, one Saturday is devoted to vision and values. The, the training is usually done over four Saturdays from 9 to 5. It's a whole day dedicated. And then the other three Saturdays is based on the three skills, the three aspects of a leader in covenant. So in a leader in covenant, we want you to practice three hats, three hats. You said as a leader in our church, as a cell group, you're, you're a teacher. So we spend one whole day as how can you effectively teach the word of God? How can you, we make sure they can practice leading a devotion, a very short sermon, and we have them practice, practice studying and teaching the word of God. The second was, how do you be a shepherd? So we spent a whole day doing really basic counseling skills. Like, how do you listen? How do you share? So we, we train all our leaders how to do that. And finally, how do you lead? How do you bring your small group? How do you bring your cell group leaders to the next level? How do you lead them? How do you, if your cell group leader has all these problems in your, their cell group, how do you lead them? to the next stage. So teacher, shepherd, leader. So this is the framework that we use in training um, our leaders in our church. So we have maturing disciple, we have multiplying disciple maker, and it doesn't end there. Because we realize some people in our church have a calling, a calling to full-time ministry. 
And we, we, we realize there are people called to full time. And I remember last um, April, we made a call for those God are calling to do full-time service. And I believe like many, like 50 people stood up. So in our church, when we identify someone with that full-time calling, what do we do? And we give them what we call a one-year IDM, IDMCI internship. It's a one-year IDMCI. It's called IDMC Intentional Disciple Making Training Institute. It's like an in-house school. It's an internship. And in its internship, um, it's, it's one year. So we ask uh, the people, in one year, stop working. <laughs> stop working. And for, for one year, we want you to explore your full-time calling. Explore your full-time calling. You quit your job. It's a huge faith journey. But because you quit your job, our church will pay you a little bit. <laughs> Just so you have enough to eat every day. <laughs> So we call it um, a, a love gift <laughs> because we love you so much. Okay, so we actually give um, you a monthly love gift just to tide you over that, over that year. So we give it to them. And we expect you to come to the office and attend um, classes and be interned and be mentored. And there's three tracks we have. We have the, the ministry track for those who feel called for full-time ministry in the church. And then we have a missions track. We believe that some people are called to do missions, cross-cultural missions outside of Singapore. And we have a missions track. And then finally, we have a marketplace track for those who feel called to remain in the marketplace. And how do we balance the ministry and the market? So we have a 12-month marketplace track for you. So every year in January, we have a batch of IDMCI interns. So in 2017, we have these batches. And they're all from different walks of life, some finances, some different people, some people working in the government, all walks of life, all ages, who have taken a year off to just explore their calling. And we, we tell them at the beginning of the year, this internship, there's no strings attached. It is for you to seek the Lord. After this, you, you, after this year is over, there's no pressure for you to join the church. There's no pressure for you to, to do anything, but just seek God. So the whole year is just for growing and for learning and to be up and close and personal with the pastors and leaders. It is a wonderful, it's a wonderful um, experience. And after that year is over, some people are called back to the marketplace. Some people are called to be on staff. Some people are called to join parachurch organization. It is okay. It, that whole year is just a calling for the Lord as well. And through this Every single one of, of our pastors and leaders in our church have, have been through this IDMCI internship. And I believe this is why our church, I believe our staff team, there's a high resonance. Because you spend one year catching that discipleship DNA. You come to the office every day. You see the good, you see the bad, you see the ugly. And you journey together. And I believe this is, um, um, this is how we renew our leadership in our church. So let's say you, um, after the year of IDMCI, you feel called to join full-time. So um, for me as well, when I, when I graduated from Bible college, I, I was compelled by a covenant's discipleship journey. So I said, oh, how do you apply for a job here? I don't know how you do it in Philippines, but in Singapore, you apply for jobs in a church. You send out resumes. But I said, covenant has no resumes. Where's the job listings? There are none. So when I came, I said, I would love to work here. What do I do? They said, join IDMCI because we want to get to know you. We want to spend one year getting to know who is Andy. <laughs> and at the end of the year, um, I was glad. So at the end of the year, they said, come and explore with us more. And they invited me to come, not on staff, but as not an IDMC intern, but we call a ministry intern. So it's another year for you to learn and to grow together with us. And we also invite people from other churches to join us. So Clevy is a ministry intern for us for two years to come and learn um, alongside of us. And eventually, I was very happy to become on staff and become a full-time um, ministry worker and now a pastor. And now as a pastor, the growing doesn't stop. The growing doesn't stop. And we are, our pastors need to grow actually more because we're always giving. And how does covenant grow 
our pastors and leaders. I, I don't have time to share, but I'll just share two aspects of how we grow. Every year, we have an evaluation. <laughs> like in the corporate world, you have an evaluation with your boss. We have the same thing. So every year, I get together with my immediate supervisor. But it's not a score. You got an A this year. You got a D this year. It's not that. It's about how have you grown this year, Pastor Andy? How have you gone, grown spiritually? How have you grown um, personally? And how have you gone, grown organizationally? It's called SPO. And you just share. And then we, with your supervisor, they mark out a, a, ten year, a five, ten-year plan to develop you in all these areas. And it's, it's a wonderful opportunity. And it, they find there's areas of lacking. Okay, Andy, you're lacking in leadership skills. We're going to send you to this leadership seminar to help grow that. You're lacking in shepherding skills. We send you for counseling courses. So we're, we try to be very intentional to develop every pastor, every leader, because all of us have different gifts. And again, every seven years, we practice a sabbatical as well and for, for pastors. And then our sabbatical is generally three months long. And the sabbatical is not just, oh, relax and sleep every day and then drink, drink um, cocktails and just have fun in Tahiti or something like that. Your three-month so your, your three sabbatical is a learning sabbatical. So they ask you, where would you like to go to learn? And you research yourself. I really love to go to this church, spend three months there as a member to learn. And that's how we learn. So for my sabbatical, I wanted to learn more about missions. So they sent me, my wife, to London. I was very lucky to go overseas, you know, <laughs> uh, to attend a three-month mission course at All Nations. And it actually wasn't sabbatical. It was hard work. <laughs> I had to study every day. It was hard work. But it was a chance to learn and to get out of Singapore, to get out of Covenant, to, see, to meet with different people. And it, it was really a blessing. So this is something our, our church um, really wants to, everyone to grow. So again, here we go. This is the, the whole list from beginning, pre-believer all the way to the full-time worker. So I hope you see the scope of how we are trying to organize um, our training curriculum and our growing curriculum in our church. I know it's a lot of material, it's a lot of information, but I want you to ask yourself one question. Looking at all of this is, where are you? <laughs> where are you? Where are you in your discipleship journey? Where are you in your training journey? Because God wants all of us to grow to the next level. So if God has planted a seed for you, or your leaders have said, I know, I, maybe God has called you full time. What will you do next? What will you do next? What course can you take? What can you do to train yourself for the next step? Because if we're not training ourselves, we actually will go backwards, right? One of the things I love to do with my wife is we, and when we come back to my hometown in Seattle, we like to go canoeing. <laughs> I don't know if you go canoeing, but canoeing is you go two people in a boat, you're just canoeing and canoeing, and it's really fun. You go forward and forward and forward. But the moment you stop canoeing, the moment you take the paddle out of the water, does the canoe continue to go forward? It starts to drift. It starts to drift. And that's why training is so important. It keeps us going towards the Lord as well. And I want to share just my own journey of growing and learning as well. And I always see me, when I go to teach and to preach at different churches, I always go there as a learner. I know I'm always asked to share about covenant, but I always ask, God, I want to learn something from this speaking engagement. And I remember last year when I came to Manila, I, I really didn't know what to expect because I've never preached at Destiny Manila before. I kind of came with fear and trembling, you know. Um, and I went um, because it was a lot of people. I'd never met them before. I'm very comfortable talking with people I know, but people I don't know very well. And when I went, I fear, went with fear and trembling. I came with a lot of anxiety. It's like, oh, were they like me? Were they like what I preach about? But God said, don't worry about it. Just preach what God has taught you. And when I walked into Techno Park, and again, the venue changed a lot. That happens a lot here in Destiny. It changes a lot. So I came to Techno Park. And I walked in the room, I think it was 7 o'clock, and every seat was full. 
And I'm like, everyone here is on time. I thought sometimes Filipino culture people are late, you know? <laughs> they call it rubber time. <laughs> it's like stretch. Everyone's here on time. When I came in, everyone's ready, and everyone had their pencil in their hand, and they were writing notes, and I was like, and I was talking, and it was, I was like, when I was teaching and preaching, I was like, wow, these people really want to hear what I have to say. And then in the back of my, I was excited, but in the back of my mind, I was like, what's wrong with them? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm being really authentic. I'm like, and afterwards, I went to Pastor Zelina and Pastor Carla. I was like, why are they like this? He said, what do you mean? I said, you know, when I'm preaching and teaching, generally, maybe half the people are looking at me. Everyone's looking at me, but half the people, their minds are elsewhere. And maybe, maybe one-fourth are sleeping. <laughs> so here, it's like 100% at the edge of your seat. And I said, did you bribe them <laughs> with pesos or a, a nice dinner? If you take down notes, they go, no, that's just who we are. And I went back scratching my head because I preached at a lot of places. And I, I never experienced this. And I went back and I said, Lord, you know, what is it about destiny? What's wrong with them? <laughs> and, then, and of course, God always is, it always starts with me, right? It's not them. What's wrong with, if God said, it's not them, it's you. <laughs> and I, and I, God said, the problem is not them. The problem is you. He goes, Andy, where is your hunger for God? Where is your thirst for God? It's not what's wrong with them. It's what's wrong with you. Has Christianity become so routine that you say, oh, I heard that before? Or has training become hearing it for the first time? Hungry for God. At going to a training, expecting God to show up. Not going with, I hope the preacher is good. <laughs> I hope I'm not wasting my time. Because honestly, that was creeping into my heart. I know it doesn't happen here, but it happens to me. That you become a bit jaded. And you say, and you know, I'd rather just stay home and rest. And God said, Andy, where is your thirst for God? Where is your hunger for God? Where you hear my voice as if it's the first time. And God said, Andy, thirst for me again. And when I left Manila that day, God really encountered me. And you know, at that day, Pastor Carlo gave like an honorarium, gave a second offering. I'm like, what's this about? And then, and I told Pastor Carlo gave me this money and I said, he said, we want to bless you. And I told Pastor Carlo later on, you have blessed me with something money cannot buy. You have given me a gift that I need to hunger for the Lord. And I pray that is our desire. Because at the heart of training is a thirst for God. Amen? Let's pray together. Lord, you are teaching us today that hearing the truth does not change lives. It is thirsting for God that changes life. We can go through every course the church has to offer, every level of training, and leave unchanged. Because we have to have that thirst for God. That wherever class we go to, wherever place we go to, God is speaking to us. And that we can learn from anybody, any person. And that is the heart of training, is a thirst for God, Lord. And as the deer pants for the water, my soul pants for you, Lord. Where I want you more than a good meal. I want you more than what money can buy. That's where we want to be, Lord.
Because you say, I am the bread of life. Come with me and you will not be hungry. And the word that the Lord said is asking, is the same word God is saying. I am the bread of life. And I know some people in this room have lost that thirst and hunger for God. You come to church every week. You're doing your duties. But that thirst is being replaced by other things. Instead of hungry for God, we are nibbling at the food of the world. And God is saying, return to me. Hunger for me, Lord. Because you're more precious than gold more precious than silver. Give me the living water that can quench the deepest thirst in my heart, Lord. Help me drink from the wellspring of life, Lord, because that is your desire for my life. And if that is your desire today, I just want you to just stand before the Lord and open your hands to Him and so, Lord, I thirst for you. Thank you, Father. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray for all of us that you'll give us a thirst for the things of the Lord, a hunger for the Word of God that overcomes working, studying, even a greater thirst than basketball. Because <laughs> all those things don't matter, Lord, really. All those things will fade away, but the Word of God will last forever. Amen. Bless us, Lord. Touch our hearts. In Jesus' precious name. Amen.